August 11th, 1967. It was a warm summer night, and William Mick was sleeping soundly in his bed in the town of Savannah, Georgia. Meanwhile, William Henry Furman, a man with a sixth grade education who was later judged to be emotionally disturbed and mentally impaired, had broken into Mick's house and was robbing him of his worldly possessions. Suddenly, Mick was awake. As he began to search his house, he encountered Furman, who was in the act of committing robbery. Later, during his trial in an unsworn statement allowed under Georgia criminal procedure, Furman claimed that as he tried to escape from the house, he tripped and dropped his gun, which discharged as the gun hit the ground. Furman later contradicted this statement with a different story he told police, claiming to have turned and blindly fired a shot while fleeing the house. Regardless of which statement was correct, there was no denying this one truth. Mick, the homeowner, was shot and killed by Furman. Furman would soon be found guilty of murder, based largely on his own statements. And because murder is a felony, Furman was also sentenced to the death penalty pursuant to Georgia's felony murder rule. Case closed, right? <laughs> well. Overall, 30 states, the federal government, and the U.S. military authorized the death penalty, while 20 states and the District of Columbia do not. But more than a third of the states that allow executions, along with the federal government and the U.S. military, haven't carried one out in at least 10 years, or in some cases, much longer. Dated. Atrocious, archaic, barbarian punishment. Um, I believe every state should have it. A great idea. It is silly to keep them alive and keep them fed, clothed. You, you don't get to choose who lives and who dies. What was it? That thing. Do you feel um, Yeah. The, the, no. I think. I think. I think. I believe. I believe. I believe. Vice News has been going around the world talking to people about the big issues and asking them how they think they should be covered. This time, we're talking to people about capital punishment and hearing opinions on the death penalty from around the world. If you want to tell us what's important, you can send a Skype video message or you can use the hashtag Vice News. I've never really been able to wrap my head around the death penalty as a form of punishment. There are other ways in which we can exercise crime and punishment. I think that child molesters, I think that rapists, I think that murderers, should probably be killed. I don't think that they should be able to breed. The death penalty has lessened crime rates. The death penalty has a lot more things to go you know, positive for it than the negativity. There doesn't seem to be any um, significant compelling evidence to suggest that the existence of the death penalty uh, has any significant or major effect on curbing crime rates. States that are enforcing the death penalty are actually spending more. The actual trial cost is almost uh, 10 times more expensive for someone who's being tried in a death penalty case versus one which is life without parole. The number of people that have been on death row are executed and, and now it turns out that they're innocent. It's hard to judge the entire United States as one body in terms of the death penalty. You won't see it as much in a state like Vermont as you will in Texas. Compared to other countries, it seems that the United States falls in the middle ground when it comes to the death penalty. In Mexico, there is no death penalty. Death penalty in France is, uh, is forbidden. We don't have a death penalty here in Bulgaria. We had it uh, when we were in communist time. I'm originally from Britain, where there's been a total ban on capital punishment. The European Union, in fact, put a ban on death penalty in the year 2000, and countries are not even allowed to join the EU unless they follow this law. I'm sure we're a lot less strict than other countries, like Middle Eastern countries, or even in the Philippines, but that doesn't mean that we should, that it's okay. While we're not the worst, we're definitely, we can do better. 2014 was a big turning point for capital punishment in the United States because there were three botched lethal injections. Some of them have gone wrong and people have sat there agonizing in pain. The recent execution botch changed my perspective on the death penalty a little bit. Botched executions really just demonstrate that we don't have the humane ways of supporting those decisions and we shouldn't fool ourselves into thinking we do. I think maybe it even seems that hanging somebody was a little bit more humane than the way that we've killed people. There's really no situation in which I can imagine capital punishment being the true, right, rational response to a crime. Punishment should not be doled out based on emotion. Under no circumstance, uh, the death penalty would be fine. 
Whether or not it could be effective in some situations, I can't say no for certain. Uh, the fact of the matter is, we give out some of the longest prison sentences in the world already. I do support the death penalty. I think that in some cases, whether it be a mass murderer or anything, I think that's one of the only situations where I would agree with it. We are a civilized country. We should be able to punish people in a way that's comparable for those crimes that does not in involve ending their life. More death and more bloodshed is not the, it's not, doesn't take us closer to a solution. I believe government should try to be better than the individuals they govern. Just last century, we were shocking people to death. So anything after that is relatively humane. That seems like a, uh, something from another time that we look back, that we'll look back at um, in hundreds of years and say, I can't believe we thought we were a progressive society and we were doling out the death penalty for uh, criminals. A utilitarian view approach came from Gabby, age 20. I believe that he should have gotten the death penalty because he shouldn't have been committing the crime, especially with the gun. That meant he intended to use it if necessary. The Aristotelian approach came from Olivia, age 21. I don't believe that he should have gotten the death penalty. Just because someone has a gun doesn't mean that they are planning to use it. Guns can be used to, as a scare tactic. Because he killed someone on accident does not mean he should have gotten the death penalty. The Kantian approach came from GN age 20. I do not believe that he should have received the death penalty, but he should have been charged with breaking and entering, as well as first-degree manslaughter. The death penalty should be reserved for people that committed predetermined murder.